So I'm going to go over the new Vardorvis boss in Desert Treasure 2. This boss has two versions, the quest version and the post version. All of the mechanics are the same in both versions, so if you're doing this to farm the boss, or if you're doing this just for the quest, this guide will work just perfectly for you. Um, one thing to note about this boss is when you come into his arena, he will not attack you until you attack him. Another thing I'm going to talk about is the, his abilities. So first, his first attack is he's going to spawn these blades in each of these cardinal directions. And they will go out, so if a blade spawns here, it'll go to this opposite corner of the room right here. So the best way to dodge it, mark these four tiles. It's like where these pillars meet, but two tiles up. Because if you do this, the only blades that can hit you, for example, if I'm standing in this tile, I can only get hit by a blade that spawns here or here. And if I need to move out of the way, I can either dip into here to dodge it, depending on what other blades are coming, or I can just run across to here and dodge it, depending on, you know, what's coming uh, from where. So, like, worst case scenario is we have a blade spawning here, here, and here. And we just run across and now we are no longer in danger of getting hit and we can focus on everything else that's going to be happening. Um, another mechanic the boss will randomly do is dash through you and leave phantom muspa like spikes on the ground. So like you'll see the little ground rumbling and you just need to move out of the way. Just one click will do. It'll get you out of there. And the last thing is the boss is going to spawn this plant. It'll happen after one of his auto attacks. And it's going to shoot a blue projectile. If you don't pray ranged before that projectile hits you then your prayers will get turned off until one of his attack cycles go through. One thing to note about this plant is it'll always hit you about two ticks before his um, auto attack is going to hit you again. So about 1.2 seconds you have to switch from prey range back to prey melee. Another thing with the plant is it has a really distinct audio cue. I really suggest using game sounds for this boss. If you're not used to usually using game sounds, that's okay. You, you'll be able to see the projectile just fine. It's very vivid blue. The last mechanic that this boss has is going to be... He puts up a little interface on your screen, and you just have to click these little blood uh, clots that appear. If you don't, you'll take some damage and he'll heal. Uh, I don't really know how much time you have to click him. Just click it really as fast as you can. There's no mistake for misclicking here. You can't... It actually blocks your, like, clicking on the actual screen itself. Oh, one last thing to note. Uh, during this boss, you should be praying melee. And also, you're just going to be wearing standard melee gear. Um, a slash weapon is what you should be using. A te uh, tentacle whip, normal whip, either one's fine. Um, whatever you want to use, blade of sail door. If you have a fang, you can also use that on slash and it should be okay. For spec weapon, I'm personally using a Bandos God Sword. I think the reduced defense helps out a lot in this fight. Um... But yeah, other than that, we're going to get right into the kill, and you can see what that's all like.